guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Glam Preezy. If you are new here, hey girl. <laughs> welcome to my channel. I am a licensed esthetician of about 15 years and a former professional makeup artist for those of you who do not know. Mostly on my channel, I do foundation and complexion product reviews and skincare. This channel is dedicated to being a professional reference to all of the beauty products that you are seeing in the world these days, especially to those underrepresented chocolate girls. So without further ado, I know you saw the thumbnail. I know you saw the title. We might as well not even waste any time and get into this. So girl, you know I had to pick it up, okay? Today we are going to be trying on the new, as of 2023, new Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet Foundation Powder. So apparently they reformulated this powder. It is a cult beauty favorite, okay? And this goes way back. If you asked anybody what one of their favorite powder foundation products were, besides MAC Studio Fix powder, they were probably going to tell you it's the Makeup Forever powder. And that's mainly because they have always had deeper shades. So this video is not a traditional review video. This is more so a first impression style kind of chit chat. I just want to try to powder on camera, okay? Now, I do need to give you some information so that you know what's different about this powder. The former powder's description says, discover a flawless natural looking base with Makeup Forever's Matte Velvet Skin Compact. The blurring formula promotes a matte skin-like finish aiming to provide up to 12 hours of wear available in 30 shades. The innovative powder is powered with Flexi Fit Complex, which offers flexible coverage and a lightweight feel. The powder's blurring technology helps to smooth and mattify the skin while seeking to minimize the appearance of pores. All right, now the original powder also says that it was for oily and combination skin types and that it was full coverage with a matte finish, okay? The new powder, the HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder has some big claims, you guys. So the description on their website for this new powder says, HD, first of all, it says one swipe foundation. That's the first thing. Secondly, it says HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder Foundation corrects, blurs, and mattifies the skin for up to 24 hours, okay? Thanks to a combination of three different powders. In just one swipe, it covers imperfections, reduces redness, refines pores, rather, smooths texture, blah, 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 blah. Achieve medium to full coverage with this buildable formula, available in a variety of shades that enhance every skin tone with four shade families, light, medium, tan, deep, and three undertones, red, natural, and yellow which they always had. Now, the formula is supposed to be clean and improved. It says HD Skin Matte Velvet is a clean formula created without animal derived ingredients and is suitable for normal combination or oily skin types, which is new. It's also water resistant, sweat proof, and smudge proof. Okay. With a silky smooth formula, this powder foundation applies flawlessly over skincare such as moisturizer or primer without creasing. I counted 32 shades, the darkest being color 4 in 75. This is the box and I picked it up in the color 4 in 74. It's really pretty it, and also the deeper you get in tone, the darker the case is. This is the viral powder y'all been seeing all over everywhere. There we go. So it comes with this sponge. I've been seeing a ton of people doing TikToks and reels and stuff using that sponge. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not using that sponge. I, I'm just, I'm, should I use it? <laughs> I do not like these types of sponges. This is like a silicone type sponge and it's just not, it, you know, I always prefer a brush. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's not get into that. <laughs> Ooh, really, you're gonna have to excuse this, but look at the, <laughs> the old packaging and you can tell I've done a lot with this. This one is in the color R520. The shades are not similar. They're not the same, you guys. That's one thing. I do have to say that every single time that I purchased this powder, 
every single time the powder shattered. This one is no different. It's shattered and I can't really give you a good idea of what it looks like inside of here because it's completely shattered. I hope they fix that. I just don't have the time. I don't have the time to pay however much I'm gonna put on the screen right now how much this powder costs. But ain't nobody got time for that, okay? It's not cheap. So while I was doing my brows, I was thinking, have you subscribed? No, no, seriously, like, have you hit the subscribe button yet? Because I think you should. I think you should. No, but seriously, consider that. It definitely helps my channel grow and it lets me know that you guys are liking the content that I am making. Hello, okay, just a small contribution to let a girl know. But now that that is on, I wanted to mention something to you all. I did film a very in-depth powder foundation how-to type video back about a year ago and I never released it because I, w I felt like at that time people were so obsessed with creams and liquids but because this foundation is coming around maybe the whole matte skin thing is about to be a thing so if you guys want that if you have any interest in me releasing that video please let me know in the comments below when using powder foundation it's super 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 important okay you guys I don't care what skin type you have I don't care. I don't, I don't care whether you're dry, oily, whatever you are. If you're about to use a powder foundation, your skin needs to be hydrated properly beforehand. There is no in between. You cannot, you can't, okay? Because you don't want to be dry and patchy and weird looking. That's not cute. So as you can see, my skin is nice and glossy and dewy and hydrated and prepped as far as skincare goes. I am using the e.l.f. Jelly Pop down the center of my face and forehead because, girl, we need a little grip. We need a little grip because it's going to be an oily situation. That's just the truth. So as far as matte goes, right, I feel like this whole flawless, super flawless, almost 90s, early 2000s skin is back, you guys. You saw Fashion Week. You saw all of the trends that are happening. And honestly, you guys, it is back. So I think that the direction that we're going in from what my eyes see is a redefined flawless look. So we want to be flawless and matte, but not cakey and heavy like we did. <laughs> if you're in your 30s, then you know what I mean. Y'all younger generation don't really know about all that. Uh, <laughs> but we made the mistakes for you. So I'm seeing a lot of very, very lightweight matte products like matte serum foundations whoever thought you know what i mean i know my ogs know this but if you are new here of course i want to let you know everything i'm using gonna be down below my favorite thing to do especially when i'm using a powder foundation is to add a lot of radiance below it i'm really really into reflective healthy looking skin and i know that sounds crazy because how do you do matte radiant but i'm about to show you if it's not looking like your skin is bomb i kind of don't want it <laughs> i did not put in this much work for this skin okay for it to end up looking like dry and crusty okay it's not a thing but something that you do want to keep in mind when you're using a powder foundation especially 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 when you are solely using the powder foundation as your foundation it is very important that you kind of follow these steps if you want it to end up looking flawless all of your liquids and your creams need to go on first don't want to get in a situation where you're having to blend any type of liquid or cream over the top of your powder foundation it's not it's not going to go well trust me unless you are of course using a loose translucent powder as some girls do underneath their liquid foundation and that's totally different so with that being said i like to go in with a warmer toned concealer first and then i'll use my brightening concealer my chocolate girls that are out there that are using translucent powder please remember to go in and tone correct with a powder that is closer to your skin tone after you set this because even though that doesn't look terrible it will clock you if you're taking flash photography or anything like that it's time to select your brushes for powder foundation right and i'm going to show you 
a couple of my favorites. I keep it real on this channel, y'all. This is not one of those super um, aesthetic YouTube channels. We will keep it real. And I need to wash these brushes. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys what my what some of my favorite brushes are for powder foundation and why. This is a flat top natural bristle brush. This is medium to firm density. And this is going to give you maximum coverage and blendability for a powder foundation. When you really want to see what your powder foundation is hitting for, you're going to go for a flat top densely packed. I know this is a horrible thing to say because I really do prefer vegan brushes and cruelty free brushes, but somehow if you can find or if you already have purchased a real bristle brush, they work phenomenally with powders. This is filthy, excuse her, but as you can see, it is a pretty densely packed almost fan style brush. This is going to give you a very soft application, but it blends like a dream because it's dense. We got another natural bristle brush. Okay, I'm sorry. Throw the paint on my fur. <laughs> natural bristle domed powder brush. As you can see, it's domed here and it comes to a peak. It fans out in a very fluffy, manner but it comes to a peak at the top it comes to like a dome it is quite densely packed as well but this is going to give you the softest application of powder this one is going to give you a flawless but soft application as well as you can see it's a tapered dome i would say it's going to give you a medium coverage whereas the large brush is going to give you more of a light coverage okay so again i got this in four in 74 and i'm gonna go in with this flat top brush i always start from the base of my face moving upward and we're going to be going in circular motions or you can do stippling motions like this going downward whatever works for you you have concealer on already so don't go too high you don't want to cover up that brightness that you created oh my god this is so beautiful wow oh my god i'm kind of shook this is next level when they say hd they mean it now I, and this is a very unpopular opinion, I was not a fan of the line of HD products from Makeup Forever, I'm sorry. If it is not the original HD foundation that they came out with way back before they reformulated it, I don't like it. I don't like the stick, I don't like the new one, I don't like the one before that. It was just something about that foundation that had too much silicone in it for me and maybe because it was that i was oily or whatever i don't know i just never gravitated towards that foundation and back then that i think was the standard in people's eyes for like a skin like foundation but to me i preferred bobby brown foundations over that one it never was my thing if we talk about hd i'm yeah this hd all right this this is I, I don't know what I expected. Look, we ain't even we ain't even finished. I'm ready to put the I'm ready to turn the damn camera off and go out. I ain't even done. So again, after that step of the foundation, everything you put on needs to be powder. Please don't play yourself. That please, if you don't listen to anything else that I say here today, don't don't you put no liquid on top of this. Don't you put no liquid on top of this unless it is your setting spray. Do you hear me? So today I'm going to be using the Sephora brand blush, the duo blush in number four Snapdragon. I'm taking most of the like the darker pigment to the back and then blending more of the, the lighter pigment towards the front of my cheek. Okay, so if you're my skin tone, go get this girl because you need this. I'm going to go ahead and pop my eyeliner on. Wow. Now I'm gonna do the other one off camera. <laughs> okay, you guys. So I have clearly done my lip a little bit. I am gonna put some lip gloss on Maybelline Lifter Gloss. 
I'm gonna go in with the Revlon The Gloss Choco Crush. A technique I like to call gloss lining. Mm -hmm. Definitely blown away. I honestly did not expect to like this product this much. I mean, look at my face. The, the face is sitting. Look at it. This blew me out the water, especially how I did not like their last foundation launch. I was very offended by that shade range. I don't like that product. It just, it was an all around no for me. So for them to come back this hard, that sums up this video. I am, wow, she needs to go out. But look at the glow though. Wow. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and watching this video all the way to the end. I love you, love you lots. Again, if you are new here and you haven't subscribed, I'm just gonna wait for a minute while you go ahead and tap that subscribe button. And while you're down there, give me a thumbs up please on the video and comment. Let me know how you like this video. Are you gonna go out and try this foundation? As always, please let me know what you want to see next. I have a couple things in mind, but if you have products or skincare that you wanna see, please let me know in the comments below. And until the next one, I love ya. Mwah. Thank you guys so much for watching me ramble on and on about my makeup addiction.